Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here. Finally recovered after watching and reviewing the live action CGI digital animated hybrid that is our famous cat and mouse duel, Tom and Jerry. Wasn't worth it, but hey, if you enjoyed it and love it, more choice to you. But I thought it was atrociously awful. I mean, considering the fact that they were the best part of the film, you know, since they always do all their wacky physical comedy with all these slapstick and other crazy stuff, but then they had to blend in with all these, as usual, with all these live action animated features. Too many pop culture references, too many pop and rap songs, you know, too many characters that ends up becoming, you know, dull, unfunny, bland not interesting, it kind of takes away the freedom of the characters themselves. And especially since they are the main stars. I mean, Tom and Jerry deserves better than that. And that all the talented actors involved deserve better than that, too. Yeah, but with that aside, though, I'm finally going to be reviewing the equally awaited creature feature that I've been waiting for since it was announced. I've been waiting a couple months since it was coming out. I'm happy that I finally got to see this in a regular feeder where you go inside on the big screen with digital sound that's causing the uh, tons of rampage and rumbling, kicking your socks off, sitting on this wonderful comfortable chair. Even though we have to practice all the social distancing, you know, six feet apart, having to wear a mask for protection, so that way we don't get caught by COVID-19 pandemic. But there are people who have taken some vaccines and hoping they'll be able to survive, and I know we will. And there are, there are people, you know, who are practicing, you know, there, are, there may not be taking some vaccines yet, but who knows? I mean, hopefully they'll still live longer either way. So we gotta try to prepare ourselves. But I got to see Godzilla vs. Kong. The God Kaju of the Sea battling the King of the Apes. Yes, and here's some proof. I went to see this at Cinemark in North Hollywood because it was one of the, the several feeders that have been reopened in Los Angeles County and I'm just hoping all the other feeders will be reopened soon I mean there are still the ones that are closed especially the one where I live and I hope that gets reopened and I know they're doing their best to keep all the feeders clean because they have sanitized them with all the seats um, with all the concession stands uh, the ticket stubs um, and everywhere it's hard to believe that I'm finally got to be inside a well, clean, established feeder without any uh, messes whatsoever, and hopefully we get to breathe uh, and live and breathe. It's just the last time I went to see a movie in a feeder, in a regular feeder, was like back in March of 2020. But after that, you know, I had to move on with these online streamings, uh, physical media, and all this other stuff to see some current films um, that are available because I mean, it sucks nowadays that you can't even watch in the theater due to this pandemic and all the theaters were closed down because of it. So. But it's rising, so at this rate uh, Godzilla and even Kong might be able to save it <laughs> and hopefully we'll get to see even more movies coming up. Um, even though, you know, they are playing some movies between both, uh, you know, regular streaming service or and selective feeders here. But, hey, Warner Brothers is doing a great job so far with, with playing movies in both feeders and on HBO Max. I mean, Disney should do the same, too, with their Disney Plus service. Yeah. Okay. Now, let's get to the story here, was that... This was, of course, a take on the 1962 film, which I always enjoy and always love. It's actually my favorite uh, King Kong and Godzilla movie. 
I mean, all together, because this is indeed uh, the 12th film in the King Kong franchise. It's also the 36th film in the Godzilla franchise. It's a sequel to both um, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, and Kong Skull Island all joining in, which in turn also joins in with Godzilla 2014. So, we got like several casts, um, half of which were from the previous Godzilla films, and then the ones uh, that are pretty much brand new. So now we were getting there. And we got another director, and then we got some writers joining in. This is going to be one terrific film, even if it's going to have some issues here and there. But yeah. And already it's becoming a huge success, um, by far. It's already raking the highest grossing film of 2021 at first, so it made and grossed uh, 285 million worldwide, and it's going to continue to spread. And hopefully more uh, feeders will be able to play this along with all the others. I mean, I just saw like upcoming trailers of other films, half of which were supposed to come out last year because of the pandemic. And now they're hoping to give a chance to play them without any rescheduling. And I know, it's getting annoying. And I hate that too. But thank God, man. Because I want feeders to, to rise. I want them to last forever. We want movies to last forever. The entire cinema. We want physical media to rise too. I mean, of course, streaming is going to last as, as much as we can. But I don't want to be stuck with just streaming, okay? Because this is just too much. I mean, now that I finally got uh, a brand new 4K Ultra HD player, and I hope I can get more 4K movies. Yeah, believe it or not, I actually got that uh, just recently, last week. I even got a, a vinyl machine, too. The same one that my sister has. So it's really cool. <laughs> so now I get to listen to music, too. I mean, I'm buying some CDs and you know, I just got a vinyl too, but I hope I can get plenty when it follows. <laughs> okay. So, um, without further ado, let's review the movie. So, it's Alexander Skarsgård. Uh, you may remember him from the TV show True Blood on HBO. He was also in the HBO miniseries uh, Generation Kill. So, he's a great actor. Millie Bobby Brown. Eleven from Stranger Things, that's on Netflix. I hope we get a new season coming up, because that's what I'm preparing for. Rebecca Hall, um, English actress. Uh, Brian Tyree Henry from this TV show called Atlanta that's on FX. I never saw that. But hey, you know that. I'm trying to, because I don't have cable at this point. But I do have uh, the Fire Stick... Um, from Amazon. Actually, I forgot to mention, I do have uh, a brand new Fire Stick uh, TV that's 4K, so I'll get to see that. And when I get a 4K TV, I'm going to be able to watch all of that stuff connected directly through the 4K HDMI cable. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sean Aguri, um, Isla Gonzalez, yeah, you may remember her from the movie uh, Baby Driver and Alita Battle Angel. Yeah, and she had a, a novella called Lola, uh, and she's done a lot of stuff, too. Julianne Dennison, of course, from Deadpool 2, and most recently, The Christmas Chronicles 2. Lance Reddick, Kyle Chandler, Harry Hobson himself from Early Edition, and, of course, <laughs> Friday Night Lights. Damien uh, Bature, and Kaylee Huddle. It's, um, of course, based on Godzilla and King Kong. The story is written by Terry Rossio, along with Michael Dottery and Zach Shields, along with Eric Pearson and Max Bernstein, and it's directed by Anna Wingard, a horror director who has done films like Your Next, uh, The Blair Witch Reboots, yeah, and so is... Um, Death Note, but he did direct some segments from the two uh, VHS movies. 
and the ABCs of death you know, come to mind. Um, and I think he also did um, Several Ways to Die or something like that. Um, well, whatever. So this is basically the first movie that he's ever done that's not particularly a horror movie. <laughs> a creature feature movie. Be prepared for yourselves, though. There's going to be some spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie, um, don't watch this review until it's time. So anyway, the movie begins said five years after Godzilla had defeated King Ghidorah, along with all these other creatures around, we finally get to meet Khan, who's being monitored by Monarch. They have to protect them inside Skull Island with this entire giant dome only to be visited by the last Irene native and she's deaf named Ajaya who's played by Kylie Hali and she has a special bonding with Khan where she can communicate with sign language such as thank you friend home and all and I know I've taken sign language um, when I was in college, so I always remember some of the signs here and there. Yeah, but it's been a long time, and it's kind of tough having to learn a different language here. But as you may already know, yes, uh, apes uh, can definitely communicate with humans using those languages, so that way they'll understand more and communicate even better, rather than just smashing. <laughs> and just doing this and all. <laughs> okay. uh, Jaya is also the adopted daughter of an expert, uh, Dr. Irene um, Andrews, who's Eileen Andrews, who's played by Rebecca Hall. So they were together as a family, hoping that Calm would be safe no matter what. Meanwhile, we meet an employee of Aspect Cybernetics and the host of Titan Conspiracy Theory podcast named Bernie Hayes, who is played by Brian Tyree Henry. Um, basically, he just extracts the data s suggesting all these sinister activities at the Pentacola facility where Godzilla suddenly attacks during this particular rampage. But he stumbles on a massive device, and that's where Madison Russell, yeah, the daughter of of Dr. Mark Russell, yeah, which of course played by Cal Chandler. Um, but Madison, as you may last saw her in Godzilla King of the Monsters, yeah, played by Millie Bobby Brown. Who's actually the fan of Bernie's podcast? She started listening to it at school, at home, everywhere she goes, and enlisted her friend Josh, played by Julian Dennison, to actually investigate all of Godzilla's attacks. Then we meet Aspect CEO Walter Simmons, who's played by Dam Damien Balcher, who also has a daughter named um, Maya is played by Isla Gonzalez so joins in here as he recruits Dr. Nathan Ling who's a hollow earth uh, ferris played by Alexander Skarsgård to guide a search uh, for the power source into the hollow earth that's going to create a gravitational field he actually agrees with Walter that Aspect had developed uh, HEAVs, which is a specialized craft to withstand the pressure of the entire field. And next, uh, Nathan had met uh, Eileen, joining in with Jaya, to actually let Khan guide them through the Hollow Earth, um, which is the outpost in Antarctica. So, joining in with the Apex team, um, they actually modified a barge escorted by the U.S. Navy. So they had to sedate it con, so in case nothing goes wrong. All the way until Godzilla arrives up the sea. 
you know, and starts destroying and attacking Khan uh, through the entire ships of the U.S. Navy. And also, you got all these air uh, jet uh, pilots around, you know, all, all flying in these jets. And of course, that's where we get to see the battle between Godzilla and Khan. And it was an epic battle right there, too. This is what we were waiting for. And it was just awesome. I mean, they were like fighting in and out of sea. You know, they, they were st destroying all this destruction we got with the ships and all. And hoping that in order to stop the, you know, the firing all these missiles around, they, f they figured maybe this will lower it down so that way Godzilla can, can just swim away while Khan is, you know, trying to recover you know, from this particular battle. <laughs> so, yeah. So now, they, so to avoid alerting Godzilla, Khan had to be airlifted to the Hollow Earth entrance, and Jaya convinced him to enter the tunnel while the team follows him in the HEAVs. Madison and Joss had had found Bernie, who's been joining in into the investigation, and that's where they wound up uh, going inside Apex. You know, they actually snuck, snuck in into the base, discovering a secret facility, and this is where they're already working on by going inside the underground motor rail transport into the next facility, and this is where it has all these other creatures around that they're about to send together and that's where we finally get to see the surprise that we were in we were going through because I know there's going to be another villain to show in yeah, here's the big big surprise here we got like a a Terminator creature called Mega Godzilla and the way we saw that it was like incredible actually got to crush all these other creatures and rip them apart like that and it even gets to uh, fire by using this uh, this laser all this other firepower here and you can see um, directly through the eyes it's this red glow and all I mean he, and he's gonna do a lot of attacks around I mean this is just incredible uh, it's being controlled by um, Ren the Zara Zara. So basically, he controls it directly through the cranium by using the the subtle head of Gadara. So, but being hobbled by its power supply, I mean, this is exactly how this is going to be created. But all the movements uh, directly straight in th from as a sample that uh, Maya. Yeah, it was, it was wanted to collect that so that way they can restart uh, Mega Godzilla under control. And that's where we're going to see the destruction. And all the way into the city, which is all filled with neon uh, signs and all these other neon lights lighting up through all these buildings. So, yes, that's where we get to see the battle once again uh, between. Godzilla and Khan, so it's almost like, you know, this is the biggest battle we all we were ever going to have, and and hoping that, uh, you know, Mark will will assign everyone to have everyone evacuate the entire city so they don't get killed. So that's what we're in for with total destruction. So of course, there's going to be round one, round two. You know, who's going to win? Who's going to lose? I mean, as long as they don't get killed, but in, that is until Mega Godzilla arrives, you know, to continue with the fight, and they and it's up to them to actually stop this uh, mechanical techno cyborg creature that we got. <laughs> and there you go. When I saw the movie. On the big screen, I was just applauding, 
I was having an awesome time. I mean, I was definitely uh, kicking off um, my socks off, just sitting in this wonderful, comfortable chair, even though I had to wear a mask and and try to have some, you know, popcorn and, and a drink and all, and then and some candy too. <laughs> I know. I mean, hey, we had to snack around. I was just, uh, I was a excited you know having to see everything happening on screen because that's what we're in for you know you want to see a lot of battling with the two characters that you love you want to see total destruction you want to see a lot of action in there that's what we're in for I mean all those fight scenes coming around um, while part of this is just is the centerpiece of the story with all the human characters so, of course because of you know, they had to throw it in for for the actual particular um, plot of, of the whole entire movie. Okay, I know, I'm talking a little shorthand a little bit. Um, okay, but as for the humans, though, I mean, it was nice to see Millie Bobby Brown again as uh, Madison, and she's always been the smart one out of the group here. Um, especially after she lost her mom, you know, Emma. I mean, even during that battle scene in Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Uh, but anyway, she's still terrific. Uh, I wish that Kyle Chandler was in the movie more. Uh, she only, he only gets like a few um, minutes of screen time. Like, maybe during the, the first half the middle and even towards the end so I'm I mean of course he's gonna be there because he wants to find out what's going on hoping just later on you know find out if that his daughter is safe even though he's trying to figure out what's going on with Godzilla and why he's, he's continuing with all this rampage like this could be a setup here and there um, anyway, uh, now, as for the other cast, um, Julian Dennison, um, I really wish, you know, he wasn't just basically a second banana, I just wish he was a lot smarter too, I mean, he's supposed to be part of the expert in creatures and all, I just don't understand. I don't know, I mean, maybe he was pretty pointless at times, but I think he was pretty much upstage uh, with um, Brian Tyrese uh, Henry here as uh, Bernie. And I know they were going to go for a comic relief these days, of course, with movies like this, there's always going to be one. Uh, but I thought Bernie was, okay, at times he could be funny, but, at, but in other times he could be incredibly annoying. And... I got tired of his act, you know, really fast, and he took too much of the screen time. I mean, I, I get it, you know, he's, you know, he, he's a, a technician, and and he's a conspiracy theorist, you know, he wants to find out what's going on in APEC, and he wants to find out in APEC about what's happening, you know, with Godzilla and all these other creatures around. And all the secret stuff that they had, and but the way he's acting is just uh, too much. I mean, I mean, he really annoys me after a while. Uh, other characters, give or take, they're like, well, hey. <laughs> um, but on the other hand, though, um. I did love uh, Alexander Skarsgård as uh, Nathan Lane. I thought he was great. Um, and so was uh, Irene Andrews, yeah, Rebecca Hall. Um, they, they did actually gave us terrific performances right here. Uh, but the best part of them all is Jaya, played by Kylie Hailey. And I, I definitely, um, she's the best friend about the film because, after all, she has a special bonding with Khan and she really cares for him so much that he was hoping that he'll never get hurt like he doesn't die 
it's definitely, you know, the perfect friendship of them all, knowing that they care. And I know uh, Eileen just had some trouble trying to understand the communication with Khan because this is why it's not easy having to understand what he's been going through. Because he wants to go home. And he's the king of the throne here. And there was a scene in the movie where when he finally got into the cave, he took out uh, his uh, throne, which basically has um, all the... Uh, the power sources directly from Godzilla that actually controls it, and I thought, and the fact that he sits on on the chair, I mean, you could definitely see how much of a king he really is. And then, of course, when you go inside uh, Skull Island, I mean, you see a lot of creatures going around, flying. I mean, I, I even love the scene where they go all the way straight into the tunnel, and and it it goes like high speed, it goes really fast. That, yes, yeah, so fast, it's almost like the movie 2001, The Space Odyssey. <laughs> you know, having the experience with all these colors and, you know, shooting uh, towards you and and you're feeling this faster speed pace that's going around. I mean, this is, and having to go upside down and having to flow around. Yeah, like all these uh, roller coaster rides here. I mean, this is just, wow, amazing and, and incredible. I definitely love the Mega Godzilla. You got this techno uh, cyborg right there, like the Terminator. Goes around, you know, using all these gadgets to control and gets to uh, create total destruction. Controls it. it's almost exactly like, you know, Godzilla himself. You know, yes, he can also shoot uh, fire, but also shoots lasers and all. I mean, this is awesome. And of course, he had to be the main villain of, of the whole story, rather than just being what, what it is. But that's cool. And uh, and I, I like the scene too was when uh, <laughs> when Jaya was actually uh, communicating with uh, Nathan, and, and he he was telling them because he was sort of afraid too. He, he was going to call them, but telling them he. he He's brave, but he's actually given this sign as coward. <laughs> and and uh, I know he was doing the same thing too, which I thought that was pretty funny. Because I, I thought they were just using a lot of sarcasm and stuff, but they do this. Um, okay. Um, the villain, played by uh, Damien Butcher, you know, Walter, eh, it was he was okay, but... But exactly what we expected. I mean, of course, we know why he was there for, you know, so he can create this uh, creature. But nevertheless, I mean, it. this is exactly, you know, why, you know, movies should survive. And this is why I'm glad to finally see a creature feature movie that, that I've been preparing for. And anyway. But... I'm just glad that now we finally have the movie all together. <laughs> so, anyway, that's Godzilla vs. Khan. And I give the movie four and a half stars. I mean, hey, why not? I mean, almost close to the five, but still, I really enjoy it. And I, and I think Adam Ringard's direction of the film actually really fits well with the tone, so I I appreciate it. I, mean, I think this is the perfect movie to see uh, during the spring. I'm hoping that it's going to continue to run uh, for a while, and hopefully it'll, it'll make a lot of profit enough to save it. So anyway, I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.